Morning. It's Thursday, the 8th of June, 2017. It's election day here in the United Kingdom, boys and girls. How exciting is this? How it's, I mean, so much more exciting than a reality game show, don't you think? Oh, yes. Election day today, boys and girls. Have you posted your elections yet? Or have you been downing into that little box? Now, remember, do not take a photo of yourself making a vote. Very, very illegal. You can get dragged in to the police station with that one and beaten. You will be beaten if you take photographs of yourselves filling in voting slips. Oh, well, it's my camera. I'll do what I like. No, illegal, dear. Don't do it. By the way, is the synchronisation all right today? I didn't realise. Do please let me know right at the beginning of a show if the synchronisation is out. It does happen sometimes. I don't know why. I don't do anything different here. But sometimes the, the, the picture and the sound are completely out. <clears throat> And I don't know until I check back on the recording, by which time, of course, it's too late to do anything about it. If it was badly out like now, I would simply have to restart the show. I, I, there's nothing like technically I can do to drag the two together. I don't think there is anyway. Actually, there is. There might be, actually. Actually, there might be. If it's ever that badly out, we could we could try that, OK? So do let me know if our synchronisation is out today. But yes, yes, you need to get down and use your vote today, whichever way, uh, whichever way it goes. And if not, if, if you take pictures of yourself, you will be dragged out of the voting box and beaten. Do not take pictures of yourself voting and posting it on Facebook. One of the worst things you can do. Absolutely one of the worst things you can do. All right. Uh, great quiz last night. Really nice quiz last night. I think we had six teams, but six fairly large teams. So I think there was about 30, 35 people playing last night. Nice atmosphere. Uh, there was a brand new team one. Uh, so that was very nice. As usual, Shang Young sort come in. They came in quite late. A little group of university type people, you know. They come along in their little group and they sit down and they talk about everyone. A focus group. A f <laughs> I could, I could, I could smell them sitting there looking around for something to be offended by. <laughs> I could. Anyway, so they've sat down. <clears throat> they seemed all right to me, and I read out a question. Right, and the first thing someone shouts at, well, we don't know the answer to that. We're all young. Usual old crap that they come out with. So I, I and I, and I crucified him. I crucified him. I said, yes, clearly young and thick. How can you not know the answer to that? At which point I got a bit of a clap there. They're so bloody important, these people that come out of university. Welcome to the real world now, boys and girls. It's not going to be an easy thing. You're not going to be able to go into a little safe room somewhere and be offended anymore. This is a real world sunshine. Yes. Anyway, I got on quite well with a boy after that, so I was quite pleased about that. But what, what, what is it that they, they feel that they must stand up and make blooming comment all the time? Not interested. It's my show. My show. I'm the one with the microphone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's say good morning to the early people today. Hello, Zach Thompson. Hello, Zach. Long time no see, sir. Morning to you, sir. Uh, Gustav says, morning, lovey. Hope you've already done your civic duty and voted to keep out the... I can't read that stuff out. I'm not I'm not going to try and swing you one way or the other today. I'm really not. But no, I haven't been out yet. I shall be doing that as soon as I've finished this morning's global television spectacular, which you are watching now, known as United Kingdom Talk. Yes. Morning, Diane. Morning, lovely Diane. Sean Michael Tra Crabtree has also already been out and voted as well, haven't you? Yes, we're in quite a lot. Of, we're very early this morning. I doubt whether there'd be very many people were watching the show live today, but there we go. Anyway, so the quiz was good last night. Um, someone keeps bringing in a dog that clearly doesn't like me. And it's one of those staffy things. You know, the ones with the great big heads. And... <laughs> It was, I, I, I met this dog last week and it was fine until I said the word cat. And then it just went mad. <laughs> Stupid dogs. Stu dogs, I'm sorry, boys and girls, if you've got one, dogs are stupid creatures. They really are. When have you ever said dog to a cat and the cat goes mad? It just listens, opens an eye and then closes it and goes back to sleep again. 
Cats are far... Fuck, morning, Rod. Rod's with us this morning. Cats are far, far superior to dogs. Dog doesn't like something. <laughs> Stupid creatures. Anyway, this dog clearly doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> so the girl comes in, she says, I'll sit over there with the dog out of the way. But he should be all right now because it's a week since he heard you mention the word cat. So I thought, OK. Walked past this dog a few times and it seemed to be all right. But then I, I said, and it sounds, and then I picked up the mic and I said, and I went, burr, burr. I can't remember why I was doing that. I might have just done it because it came out. Morning, Matthew. Morning, Matthew. It might have just done it because I, uh, 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 um, sorry, I might have made the, the noise. Just, this is one of the things I do. You know, I can be out, I can be out randomly and suddenly make a strange noise for no reason whatsoever. Or it might have been involved in one of the questions, you know, uh, what was the first phone call ever made? And when I went, and, sorry, the dog lost it again. This blooming dog. Oh, God. Keep your dogs under control. It's like the people out in the street, don't they? You ever been out in the road? We're out having a walk, and it's like, woo, 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 and the, 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 you ever had that? And the owner's behind it, I mean, it's all right, it won't hurt you. How do you know? Just because it loves you. Doesn't love me, loves you, because you give it food. What I should do is carry a steak or two in my pocket, you know, full of nails and razor blades, so next time that happens, I'll just chuck it on the floor. And then, yeah, 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 and go run it back to its master. Pathetic. Cats don't do that. If cats get hurt, they just walk off and sort themselves out. Not dogs. Go running back to your mummy or daddy. Like that, aren't they? Ghastly creatures. Ghastly. Uh, Matthew reckons dogs should not go into bars, really. Well, you do. You do, Matthew. How can you say dogs should not go into bars when you do yourself? Think about that one, my love. Yes. So that's the dog. Uh, long journey into work again last night. Uh, I, I mentioned again a couple of weeks ago, the, the journey times going into L London have got have got bad again. Don't know why. Don't know why. It was all right and after Christmas, directly after Christmas. Then shortly around Easter time, it started getting bad again. And last night, two hours to get to work. Two hours. So hit my journey is yesterday. Get this right. So two hours to get to work, driving into work, inching along in London, right? Two hours, two, two, two hours and twenty minutes to do my quiz, or you could say do the job. Hello, Isaac. Is our friend Isaac? When you come in to sing for me, Isaac, you'd like the Camden Eye. Camden Sundays eight till eleven. Come along. Uh, so two hours and ten minutes, two hours to get to work, two hours and 20 minutes to do the job and an hour and 45 minutes on the way home last night. Now, why was that? That was I, I don't know that I was taken around all this traffic. There must have been a lot of traffic on the main road. That was at half ten at night, half past ten at night. Dreadful. So that's got bad again. But how ridiculous to have to travel three hours and 45 minutes to go and do a job that's, that takes two hours and 20 minutes. Madness. I'm spending so long in a car. It's a good job I've got a nice car now, isn't it? It really is. Although my neighbour, not the one next door to me, there's a, we've got a bloke who fixes. You know, every, everyone, every area has got a bloke that fixes all the cars, haven't they? Lovely, and he's such a nice man, Phil. Always got one with him. He's got a little family, his wife, um, son. I think he's got daughters as well. I can't remember now. Anyway, um, so last night, <clears throat> just before I left for work, which was about 10 to 6, I left for work at 10 to 6. I'm reversing out of my garage. And um, <clears throat> Phil was like, all right, Chris, how are you? And he's waved, and he's walking over. He said, oh, have you got rid of the little car now? I'm like, you what? He said, the little car was Toyota, wasn't it? I said, the Yaris? He said, yeah, the red one. Is that gone now? I said, that was back in September, Phil. And he's like, oh, was it? I said, yeah. Oh. And he has seen me coming in and out of that garage. And I'm... <laughs> People don't pay full attention. What's all that about? So please pay full attention as to what's going on around you, or you will miss things, boys and girls. Those of you who are joining the, sh the show late today, such as Alan Russell and Ray Belusco. Morning, Ray. 
who works in Morrison's at Queensbury. Ray Balesco is head cakes person on the cakes and bread counter counter at Morrison's in Queensbury in London. If you ever want to go and visit him, tell him Chris Reardon sent you. <clears throat> and you might get a free current in your current bun, an extra current. People are so generous. They really are. Huh? So that's um, uh, that's the quiz last night. Long journey in. Um, now, the place where I do the quiz at, you might be interested in this. It's a theatre bar, which means it's a bar at the front. Front. And a th I said front then with a TH. I wonder why that was. Uh, so it's a bar at the front and you walk through and there's a theatre at the back. So they always have different performances uh, on all the time. Strangely enough, uh, I bumped into a friend. Now, get this. I bumped into a friend of mine last night who I haven't seen for about 12 years. Mark was his name. Mark Flood. Good morning, Mark, if you're watching this morning. And here's the thing. <clears throat> so I'm walking around and there's a crowd of people coming in waiting for the theatre part of the bar to open. And I looked around and I saw the back of someone, someone's head. Now, I haven't seen this bloke for 12 years, and I immediately knew it was him. Now, how weird is that? Had, couldn't see his face from behind, not at all, not even like a little ear sticking out or something like that. Well, I could see his ear sticking out, but I just knew immediately it was my... And he doesn't live round here, he lives up north somewhere. So I got a bit closer. I thought, well, I better double check before I say something. And I came round to the front, and sure enough, it was my mate Mark. Isn't that strange? I knew from the back, and that's happened before. I recognised people from the back. Has that ever happened to you? Don't even need to see their faces. Strange, isn't it? How strange and mysterious that is. So Mark was there last night. Anyway, so the theatre at the back, they have all these performances going in. <clears throat> I thought you might like to know. Now, if you like opera, now I've been, I've been to one opera and one near sort kind of opera i went to see wagner's the master singers that's about a year ago now which i thoroughly enjoyed that was fantastic and i also went to see an opera and it was a new opera i think by mozart i didn't enjoy it didn't like it at all uh number one it's in foreign so you uh, above the stage got, got the little words coming up in english but you don't want to be looking up there all the time you know, but it's in foreign now the king's head theater bar in september are doing uh, between, and it's on for five weeks, Pacini's Tosca in a new English version by Becca Marriott and Adam Spreadbury. I can't even... That's that's bad, that is. I mean, it's... I, who prints these blasted flyers? You can't see the words on some of them. Mayer. Spread... 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 What's it say? Spreadbury Mayer. OK, so this is on at the King's Head Theatre. Uh, and I thought you might want to know about that. Tickets between £10 and £35. And uh, the story goes, as the Second World War rages on, lovers Tosca and Cavadossi give refuge to a political prisoner and find themselves ensnared in the uh, machinations of the tyrannical head of the Paris Gestapo, Scarpia. All right, so that's it. Five week limited season starts on the 27th of September and it's in English, an English version. Pacini's Tosca at the King's Head Theatre Bar starting on the 27th of September. You might want to go and watch that. All right, I think that'd be excellent. I might go and watch that myself. I'll probably get three tickets. Thank you very much. Saving myself a total of £20. Gling! We like to save money, dear. We do. Uh, Ray Belasco says, the new French franchise out with strawberry cream. Do you mean French fancy? Oh, no, Ray, I'm not having any cakes at the moment. We're on Slim as well, dear. Doing very well again. I had my weigh in on Tuesday. I've lost three and a half pounds. So we've had another two days since then. And since Tuesday, I don't think I've had any sins at all. I've been doing very well. Very well indeed. This morning for breakfast so far, I've had baked beans, just baked beans, tin of baked beans. That's lovely. Lovely thing to have for breakfast. Uh, sin free. Uh, this afternoon, <clears throat> I've planned my meals today. This afternoon, I've got double egg and chips. When I say chips, I mean a potato cut up, a quick spray of fry light and then baked in the oven. Replacing the tomato sauce for vinegar. Absolutely. You've got to try them. 
Oh, my God, they're delicious. Sin-free, because they're not done in fat, you see. Couple of sprays of oil, that's all you need from that, um, from that fry light thing. Very good. And the eggs, also sin-free. And tonight, I think I'm going to cook myself a vegetable curry. As on the, um, the Slimmer's World app, I think I'm going to do that. Now, my mate... Oh, what's happened there? Uh, okay. Uh, my mate is coming round as well tonight, but he doesn't like anything spiked. Oh, he's a nightmare going out to restaurants. Well, I don't go out to restaurants much anyway. Uh, always something to complain about. Moaning all the time. Oh, 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 no spices, no this, no this. Oh, just, just put it down in front of him and pick off the bits of pepper. That's what I say, dear. Moan, 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 moan. Right, let me see if I can find my um, recipe for my vegetable curry later on. Uh, recipes, there it is. Recipes, vegetarian recipes. Although you don't, as I said before, you know, you don't have to specifically do vegetarian recipes. No, you just take any recipe and then replace the meat with a meat substitute. In my case, usually corn. I do now. Let's see if I can find it. Leek and potato soup, egg, tomato and mushroom chips. Faf what's what's fale? Farfalle. Farfalle with beans and green vegetables. I don't know what that is. Homily pie, hot, uh, hummus, Indian vegetable curry. There we are. Look at this one moment, please. The addition of fat-free natural yoghurt to this curry gives it marvellous creamy texture. So there we are. Oh, fat-free yoghurt, is it? Oh, I've got that. Have I got that? Yeah, I've got that in the, in the cupboard. So there we are. Serves one. All the bits and pieces there. Turmeric and cauliflower. No, that's that can't be what I was going to do then. Well, there was one that, that requested fromage fray. I don't know what one that was. Maybe it was the bean... Might have been the bean stew. One minute. Italian bean stew. Why have I bought that then? <laughs> I've got <clears throat> Moroccan vegetable stew. That looks nice as well, doesn't it? Gosh. Quick vegetable risotto. I've done that one already. Corn, spaghetti bolognese. And there's loads in it. Oh, well, I don't know why I've bought that then. Spanish omelette. That's Oh, that's nice. Do you like a Spanish omelette? Oh, that's delicious. Although I'd, I have tried that before with limited success. <laughs> I put the eggs in and um, and the vegetables. It, it just didn't come together very well, but that's the way it goes, isn't it? Never mind. I'm sure I'll, I'll do something with that. So probably I'll do myself a vegetable curry tonight. Uh, good news. The air conditioning man came at last, boys and girls. Yes. And uh, he's quoted me for a new air conditioning unit. I'm not going to have a Mitsubishi this one. I'm going to have an LG I was given two, three options, actually, like bronze, silver, gold. They all do the same thing, that they go up in in prices. Uh, so the bronze was the LG one. The one in the middle was something else that I'd never heard of. And the one at the top was the Mitsubishi. Now, I've got Mitsubishi one here. But I do like, and I'm, what, I never go for price, actually. I never go for price. I like the LG brand. I've got two televisions in the house. Uh, only 32 inch jobs and they're both LG televisions which I've had a number of years and you always see LG products I've seen LG air conditioning in places like that haven't I uh, so I I'm going to go for the LG one which just happens to be the cheapest one as well and we'll see how that one goes all right uh, Alan says is there something wrong with the mic no I don't think so why is there something wrong with the mic no no one else has told me there's something wrong with the mic Alan why are you always moaning there's something technically wrong? He does it at the karaoke. He comes up, moans. There's always something wrong. We stop moaning, Alan, for Christ's sake. Nothing wrong with a mic. Nothing wrong with it. I'm sure there isn't. Someone else would have told me. Ray says, do you ever sleep? No. No. Ray, I, I managed to get to bed earlier now. I'm usually in bed sometime between one and two o'clock. Uh, last night was about quarter past one. I got to bed last night. I'm very happy to say. Thank you. That's one of the benefits of now finishing earlier work. I don't go on now past midnight. Midnight is my latest time I finish now, which I'm very, very happy about. Tonight is my first um, my first Thursday off uh, permanently for God knows how many years. And I'm very, very happy about that. Very happy. You know, going that two o'clock on Thursday used to do my head in. It really did. But it's gone now. Good. Good. Although I would like to do something on Thursdays. Maybe another quiz night somewhere. I'd like to do a quiz night somewhere or a karaoke somewhere. So if you know of anywhere, let me know. A little private message perhaps, OK? Not expensive. I'm cheap, dear. Cheap, cheap, cheap. 
cheap, cheap, cheap. Where's your mama gone? Where's your mama gone? That's chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap. Did you see the connection there? It's like a Radio 2 link, really, isn't it? Yes. Uh, morning, Adam. <clears throat> he says, I can hear your beautiful voice loud and clear across all transponders. Yeah, see, it's him. It's him. It's Alan again, moaning. He's always got something to blooming moan about. Can't you go and stick a couple of tickets on people's cars, Alan? When you're doing that other little job of yours? <laughs> Actually, I've got a story here. Hang on a minute. I've got a story here. Now, look at this. Talking about parking tickets. This, this is disgusting. In the Daily Mail this morning... Motorists have slammed traffic wardens for slapping parking tickets on cars left inside a police cordon set up in the wake of the London Bridge terror attack. I mean, they really are scum, these traffic wardens, aren't they? Not the ones with the yellow. It would be the private ones. I bet it would be the ones run by the councils. They are so desperate for money. Who would this be? Is this Lambeth Council or Southwark Council? One of the two, isn't it? Pictures from within Borough Market show several cars with £130 fine notices on them, uh, which is not necessarily quite, quite right there. It says 130 but generally, if you pay it within 12 days, it's half the price, OK, just to let you know that. Because I had a parking ticket the weekend, didn't I? It's still here, look. It's here. From Barnet Council. At no, what, what was it? Eight o'clock at night? Oh, wait a minute. At nine, at nine o'clock at night, this arrived on my car. Nine o'clock on a Sunday night inside a, um, a, a pedestrian box. Not a pedestrian box. You know, a, 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 a car box. A residential permit box. Nine o'clock on a Sunday night. Please do me a favour, will you? Barnet Council. Don't go to Barnet. Never drive to Barnet. Don't go there. Don't ever go to Barnet. <laughs> They're so desperate for nine o'clock on a Sunday night. Come on, lads. Aren't you pathetic scum? You are scum to be, de to, to be doing that to people. Don't bother me. Yeah, I came, I came in Sunday night, come straight up, says, fired up my computer and paid it straight away. You desperate for the money, aren't you? Pictures uh, from the Borough Market, as I say, they've got fine notices. A number of business owners were said to have been forced to shoo away wardens as they tried to get restaurants and bars within the cordon back up and running. Are you serious? Police began removing the cordon bit by bit in the early hours of this morning, with motorists claiming they were told to pick up their cars from 8am. According to one driver, vehicles were already being ticketed minutes later. And there are pictures this morning. There are pictures of people in that road with, 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 with some parking bloke. Look at this. So who, who the hell are they? It, it disgusts me. It really does. This bloke said he'd received an email from the police at eight o'clock telling him he could come and collect his car, but claimed that by five past eight in the morning, vehicles were being slapped with fines. A bloke who's a manager of a restaurant on High Street said his boss was almost given a ticket. He told The Sun, it's unbelievable. The car was there since Saturday. He could not come because nobody can come inside. How could he have moved the car? <clears throat> This morning, he could not come because he lives far away. The mind of some people are not compassionate. Come on. He said, I explained to the traffic warden that the car was there since Saturday and couldn't move it. It was lucky the key was here. Otherwise, he would have got the fine. Transport of London said it since it will write off the fines, which could have stretched to £130. But they shouldn't have to do that. People shouldn't have to do that. Hello, I've got a fine. Oh, yeah, OK. Well, well you shouldn't have to pick up the fine. Why have you put the bloody tickets on there in the first place? Dreadful people. <clears throat> Absolutely dreadful people. Hundreds of cars have been left in the same spot since the police set up the quarter. See, they would know. They would have all these... Oh, I say that, that. I say that, have it on the cameras. Because usually, if something happens to you, right? And you say, oh, have you got it on... Oh, the cameras were switched off. The cameras weren't working. The only time these damn cameras seem to be operating is when they want to catch motorists. Have you noticed that? I've got my car broken into. Can I see the CCTV? Our oh, cameras weren't working. It's disgusting. Why would you ever want to drive to London unless you absolutely had to? I wouldn't. I only drive to London for work. 
I drive to London for work. And on the one occasion, the one occasion that I had to, I drove to London while not at work on Sunday night, got a ticket. And I wasn't the only one either. My mate got a ticket as well. Single yellow line. Six o'clock Sunday night. De they're desperate, aren't they? Absolutely desperate. So that, that, that's, once again, proof that uh, virtually all parking attendants are scum. Absolutely. Uh, Alan says Barnet are awful. Yes, they are. Ghastly people. Dreadful, 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 disgusting people. They really are. Now, on the show yesterday, was it last? Yeah, we did a late night yesterday. Oh, yeah, who, who was it was, 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 um, asked me where the live shows had gone. I don't know what, he, what he's been watching, but sometimes, normally the shows are live now, as you well know. Sometimes there'll be a recorded one. OK, sometimes there'll be a recorded one. Normally they're live. And someone was saying, oh, what's happened to the live Facebook? I mean, do you watch the wall at all? Do you watch my wall? I'm always amazed when people send me a private message saying. When is your karaoke on next? Oh, excuse me. That, that's Ronnie's house. Hang on a minute. Let me just turn it off. Otherwise, that's going to keep making strange noises. When you hear that noise, Ronnie and myself, we've got little cameras. We've got doorbell video cameras and as well as when someone pushes the button it goes ding dong as well as that every time there's a movement outside we get a little noise and it starts recording oh yes catch the burglars dear catch the burglars yeah it always surprises me when people send me a private message and say um when is the karaoke on or are you doing karaoke tonight like minutes after i've put up a poster saying that the karaoke is on tonight do people not look at the wall I don't understand that. Look, here's, here's another one from here from Kevin. Good morning, Kevin, who says, did you come on last night? Did you have a look at the wall? Did you have a look at the wall, dear? Why is that necessary to ask me? You should be able to see that on the wall, surely, dear. Do you have eyes that open? Have a look. Craig says, I've got the same doorbell as you. Yes, you have, Craig. Aren't they fantastic? I love it. Um, is yours wired in or is yours battery? I charge mine up. It, it lasts a long time, the battery. I would say four to six weeks and I just take it down and charge it up overnight. Do you charge yours up or is yours wired in? I looked at the wiring diagram and I couldn't work it out, to be honest. I wasn't quite sure how to do it. So I thought I'd just charge it up now and again. So there we are. Yes, good morning to you, Craig. Nice to see you, sir. It's lovely. A ring doorbell. That's what you want, a ring doorbell. Don't get one of the cheaper ones because it won't be as good. Mine's battery as well, so thank you. Uh, Katie the cat's all right. She's downstairs. She was a good girl this morning because I got up this morning and she hadn't messed on the paper, just a little bit away. So I put her outside. She walked around a few times and then messed in the garden, which is acceptable. I then, what I do, if she messes in the garden, if it's a little bit, you know, not quite solid, then I put some earth over it, wait for it to dry and then pick it up and chuck it over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. There's only bushes out there. No one goes in there. And that's all right. Um, Alan says, can you see someone coming to your door even when you're at work? Yes, you can. Not only that, Alan, I can talk to them through my phone. Oh, hello. Yes, I'm just, uh, I'm just, are you, of course, you would never say that you're 30,000 miles away in Australia or so. You wouldn't tell them that. You'd say, oh, I'm just two minutes down the road. Can you leave the parcel? And you tell them where to leave it. They're fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, he's got a solar-powered camera as well. Can I have a link to that, please, Craig? Is that a ring item as well? I am considering getting another couple of cameras, but they're not cheap, are they? About £145. You know, I can't afford one of those at the moment, dear. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, they're, they're really good, Alan. And also, Alan, if, uh, if I wanted to, I could give you the link and you could also watch my camera... And talk to the other people on it as well. You can, you can share the camera with as many people as you want. It's fantastic. So my mate's got mine and I have got his as well. Uh, and also my nephew Gary has got mine as well. So, you know, I have to be, <laughs> I have to be so careful who you take through the front door now, dear. Everyone knows who it is. Oh, oh, who was that? Who was that at your at your house last night at three o'clock, Chris, in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got the ring. I've got your ring thing there, um, uh, Craig. But what, what you say you've got a solar powered camera. Have you got a link for that? 
Is that a ring as well? Because the, the one you're sending me is just the doorbell. So if have you got the link to the um, solar camera as well? Because I'd like to have a look at that, if you don't mind. Hello to Paul Stone. Greetings. Victoria Sponge is in the house. Greetings, Paul. And I'm with you Saturday, aren't I? How exciting is that, dear? When we will be frying the blue flag on Saturday night. I do hope we, we have some of those dreadful red people in on Saturday to take the mick out of. Now, you remember I was talking about the um, lady on yesterday's show that had been to Slimmer's World. I told you I've lost three and a half pounds this week. There was someone who's lost four pounds. At the early session, at the early session, I said to you there was a lady who'd lost even more weight and I never got around to telling you how much it was. How much do you think this lady lost in a week? How does 11 pounds sound? It's true. This woman lost 11 pounds in the f in her first week of going to Slimming World. Now, it has to be said, I think, and I think I'm correcting this, the bigger you are, the easier it is to lose an awful lot of weight in that first week. And then it, is, it kind of starts slowing down, I think, as you, as you lose it. 11 pounds in the first week. That's not bad, is it, eh? Wouldn't you like to lose 11 pounds of weight? Well, you, won't, you probably won't. I've never heard of that. Everyone was clapping and all that. Of course, she wasn't there because she was at the first session. She, she was right in at the very end. While we were coming in, she was leaving. So when they read that out, one of the old dears at the back, she said, oh, God, what did she have to do? Put stones in her pocket on the first time they weighed her. <laughs> That's at Slimming World. Guarantee it works. It absolutely works. Um... Kevin says he's bought a new mobile phone. Oh, what are you getting? Ah, oh, thank you. Accessories for ring video doorbells. Let's have a quick look at that. <coughs> ring video. Oh, so a solar panel. Oh, look at that. A solar panel stick-up camera. Oh, I'm liking the look of that. I've got a plug-in chime. And oh, what's that there? Install kit. Ring install kit. That's a new thing. That's a little one, isn't it? That little one there, or is that the normal size one? The install kit. Oh, I'm gonna have to have a look at that. Thank you, um, uh, thank you, Craig. <clears throat> thank you, Craig. Because I could put up, you could put up one of the solar ones anywhere, couldn't you? As long as you're in sort of Wi-Fi range, I suppose. You need to be in Wi-Fi range, although you can just use a a Wi-Fi uh, extender type thing, couldn't you? Yeah. Morning, Lewis. Nice to see you, Lewis. And Kevin also says he does his own his own slimming, do you? How much have you lost then? Because I've tried to do mine on my own. To, uh, I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it, I'm afraid. It's, it's the group, you see. It's being with a group of people that does it. Here, last night, I've come in last night. I thought, oh, do you know, it's a bit chilly. I've changed my duvet back. A couple of weeks ago, I put the... No, about a week ago, actually. I put my summer duvet on because I was fine. I was getting too hot under the other one. But the last two nights, I've noticed, you know, oh, a little bit chilly in bed. And you could snuggle up to yourself because, sadly, there's no one else in my bed. There hasn't been anyone else in my bed for a few years now, I have to say. And not, not that I'm complaining. Not that I'm complaining. I've swapped cuddles in bed. I've swapped cuddles for uh, relaxation. Because I'm no good sleeping with people. I think there's about two people, maybe two or three people in my entire life that I was able to sleep with. And there's been a few. I can't lie. In my younger days, I was a bit, you know, there was quite a few. To be, I can't lie to you. There was. Not now. It's been a few years since someone's come in, since someone's come in my, since someone has been, has been in my bed. It's true. But you know what? Doesn't matter. There's no nasty smells or anything like that. No one pulling the blooming duvet over there. You know, no one goes whoosh, straight in your face when they turn over. And I stretch out like a starfish in my bed like that. Sometimes I go to sleep like that. Like Jesus on the cross. I'm like that. Feet together like that. Like that. No one to worry about. No one nudging me. Are you snoring? No one trying to get out of bed and step quietly to the toilet. Oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, someone's woken me up by going to the toilet. 
No one waking you up, wanting things, you know. Are you awake? No, go away. <laughs> no one turning the telly on quietly because they can't sleep or reading a book with a light on next to you. There's no one in my bed. Good. Good. You don't know if you <laughs> if you have a partner, whatever, or two or three in the same bed at the same time. I've heard people that do that. If you've got a partner, you know what I mean. I bet you haven't had a comfortable night for years. All that noise, especially the bottom noises. <laughs> oh, no. In the bed. And they think it's funny, didn't they? Ghastly people. I'm so happy that I sleep on my own. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know how we got on the subject of that. Anyway, so I've been getting a little bit cold the last two. I, mean, I find myself, oh, I'm in bed a bit like that. So I changed the duvet back last night to the um, to the medium one, not the really thick winter one. I've got I've got three: a thin one, a medium one, and a thick one. I've changed it back to the to the medium one, and uh, much better. I was warm last night. I'm pleased to say. It has been getting a bit cold at night, hasn't it? I hope the summer returns at some point. We've only had two weeks this year so far, haven't we? Two weeks of summer. Oh, dear. Ray B says, I've got two teddies in my bed. Well, teddies are all right, Ray. I wish I'd kept my teddies as a child. My childhood teddies. I had two. I mean, literally, they were falling apart by the time they were chucked away. I wish I'd kept my childhood teddy bears. Hmm. Alan said, who would you like next to you in your bed? Well, not you. Not you, mate. Is that what you expected? Oh, please, Alan, I'd like you. No, not you, mate. Want someone a bit younger than you? Thank you very much. Certainly no one my own age. Uh, <laughs> oh, Kevin's got a Samsung S8. I don't know what that is, Kevin. I'm an iPhone person myself. I'm an iPhone man. Ashley said, would you sleep? Would uh, Chris would sleep with anyone with a pulse. No, I would not, Ashley. Thank you very much. You're not getting in my bed, love. Making you smell. And then, and then even if it's not bottom smells, it's feet smells. Disgusting people who don't wash their feet or cut their nails. That's another one. That's another one. When they turn over and your leg gets scratched because they haven't cut their toenails. Disgusting. Disgusting. Or you might find a bogey on the on on the sheet. Awful people. Someone wet the bed once, not in here, in my flat in Wandsworth. That's about 28 years ago. I woke up and I thought someone's left a tap on. No! No one had left a tap on. They'd wet my bed. I had to get a new bed the next day. Ghastly people. Ever since then, I put down plastic. You probably got plastic on your bed, Ashley, because of your little accidents that you have, haven't you, eh? It's all right. We're all adults. We can talk about that. Now and again, people do have little accidents in their bed. Some more than others, such as yourself, Ashley. That's why you got that plastic down, haven't you? A little tip there, anyone who's thinking of putting plastic down on bed, don't use cling film. Too thin. Far too thin. It tears. It's no good at all, cling film. You need thick plastic. Not bin bags. They're not thick enough either. You'll cut, what'll happen is you'll cut it off and then you'll have a little accident. Oh, that's okay. I put a bin bag down. You'll take the sheet off and you'll see the bin bands ripped and it's gone straight through to your mattress. Terrible stain. You can't get rid of those stains there. Dreadful. Dreadful. Um, <clears throat> solar panel duvet. No, Ashley, not a solar panel duvet. You obviously came halfway through the show and you missed that bit, didn't you? You've missed that bit, Ash. God's sake. Mark is off to vote soon. Good lad. I should be off to vote as soon as um as soon as I finish this. I'm going to have a cup of tea. Oh, I've got to have my pills. I've got half hour to have my pills. So I've got to have my pills and then I'll uh, go and vote immediately and then I shall go swimming. Ashley says, Chris wants a camera doorbell so he knows who's at the door, so he can keep the grate unwashed out of his house. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. There was a Labour bloke the other day who tried to ring my, who was ringing my bell. I didn't reply. This is going to come through those doors, dear. I don't think so. Ghastly people. Ghastly. <sighs> Alan says, does Katie ever jump on the bed with you? She used to. Good morning, Simon. Morning, Simon there. Oh, dear, you're one of those Labour people, aren't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> Morning, Simon. Have you got a cat, Simon? Katie used to sleep with me. In fact, Alan, Katie the cat used to sleep so close to me, I could feel her breath on my cheek and on my lip. And that's where she used to sleep, right up here. Uh, but not now, because it was creating absolute havoc with my asthma. It's probably a good job now, because she's, as you know, she's very incontinent. A little bit like yourself, Alan. Um, but, uh, uh, yes, she did used to sleep with me, and it was lovely. I actually used to drive home looking forward to getting into bed with a cat. Not in, she wasn't in the bed. She was, like, on top of the duvet, you know, in that in that position that they get in, like, on all fours. <sighs> purring away and she would wake me at about eight o'clock in the morning meow and she'd start walking up and down me she'd jump if i was on my side she'd, she'd jump on my side and started walking up meow meow i want my breakfast meow, meow walking up and down like that <laughs> and then once she put her she i could feel her putting her paw not with nails putting her paw on my face pushing me like that trying to wake me up <laughs> we love cats we love cats. We love cats. <laughs> yes, indeed. <clears throat> um, Lewis, what's that mean, PM or AM? It's AM at the moment, isn't it? Why don't you get a cat flap? I've got one. I've got one, but she don't go out anymore, Alan, uh, Kevin. Poor thing. I've had my cat 18 years, 17 years. She's about 18. She was my mother's cat. When my mother um, passed away, I took the cat on. That's how it went. So last night, <clears throat> I've got in from work. And uh, I've started eating now. Before bed, actually. Before bed. What happens, uh, I have my breakfast in the morning, which is usually something like a tin of beans. Or beans and eggs. Something like that. Then I have my lunch. Today it's going to be double egg and chips in the oven. Not oven chips. Homemade chips in the oven. Bit of fry light on, as I mentioned at the beginning of the programme. And dinner tonight, I think I'm going to try and cook a vegetable curry from scratch. So that's what my dinner is today. So I got in last night. Uh, but I don't eat between lunch and when I get home. So that whole period of work, no food. Other than maybe a banana or two. I take a couple of bananas in for work. All right. All part of the Slimmer's World thing. So when I get home, usually a bit peckish. Now, according to Slimmer's World, it doesn't matter... What time you eat? Now, you've often heard people say, oh, you shouldn't eat after five o'clock or you shouldn't eat just before bed. Uh, according to them, it doesn't matter. Makes no difference. And actually, I can't see that it would. Why would it make any difference? For example, if you put petrol in your car in the morning or you put petrol in your car in the evening, would it use any more or any less? No. So it must be the same for humans, I think. Humans. I like that program, Humans, do you? With the robots. They're robots, aren't they? I like the way they move their eyes and head. When they look right, they go like this. Left. They move the eyes first, you see. Can you do that? It's a bit eerie, isn't it? Eerie. <laughs> so, last night I got in and I had um, a corn steak. And some chopped up tomatoes on top. No tomato sauce. Tomato sauce contains sins. We don't like sins. So I had a corn steak, chopped up tomatoes on top, followed by strawberries. Did I have any yogurt? I don't think I did. Just strawberries. Just some strawberries. And I had that just before I went to bed. And while I was having that, I watched this programme on the telly. Something I've never seen before, but I kept seeing it advertised. Love Island. Have you ever seen Love Island? It's on ITV2, I think. Something like ITV2. Matt says, I'm making you feel hungry. Oh, Matt, if you're hungry, do you just jump in that car now and I shall cook you whatever you want? Come on. <coughs> chop, chop. Matt's coming round. Are you coming round, Matt, for something to eat? It'll only take you about an hour and a half, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> worth it. I will make it worth your while. <laughs> come on, Matt. Come round for dinner. <clears throat> right, let's see then. So I watched this programme, Love Island. Ever seen it? What a dreadful programme that is. Awful. So it basically, it's about all these young lads and young girls and they go on this island to pair up. And they are... All very nice to look at. All of them, really. 
They're all sort of fairly decent to look at. Well, very decent. You know, the boys, not a bit of muscle on them. The girls, well, I mean, they're, they're just wearing strings. They're almost, a the lot of them are practically naked on this program. Lovely to look at. Would you ever want to meet them? No. So over, um, oh, over confident. I can't stand overconfidence, can you? It just comes across as aggressive and they're all like it. Me, 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 me. You wouldn't want one as a boyfriend or girlfriend, just because they look nice. They look nice. Oh, they look nice. Might be all right for one night. That's about it. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go with any of them. And, of course, they've all got those fake teeth. Either they've had them painted white or have got those veneers on. <clears throat> Lovely to look at, you know, but how long have you got your looks? Might last about five years, ten years if you're lucky. Fortunately, at 54 years old, I've still got mine. Isn't that amazing? You know, probably you. Sometimes you watch a show and then you, you go and look at yourself in the mirror and you think to yourself, I wish I looked like Chris Reardon. Is that how it is for you? And I can understand that. I do it myself sometimes. After I finish the show, I look at myself in the mirror and I think to myself, I wish you'd looked as good as you do on the television. Being a television personality and host as I am. Anyway, so this programme, Love Island, all fake white teeth, girls wing wearing just strings, just strings as a swimsuit. No one's ever dressed. All the lads are walking around in the tiniest shorts, you know, which are just above their hairline. The top of the shorts are just above the hairline. I think some of them must shave down there. In fact, they were all wearing practically nothing. That's how they, that's the whole show. They were all walking around in swimming trunks and shorts and bikinis wearing practically nothing. And then they play these games. And the game last night they were playing was spin the bottle. So they've got this giant bottle on the floor on some sort of pin, what makes it go round and round. And they all stand around this thing and they spin the bottle. And the, the subject of yesterday's spin the bottle was dirty secrets. So if the bottle lands on you, they say a dirty secret. So the girls are all standing at the top. Right, I've, I've got this slightly wrong. The girls are standing at the top and the boys are around the side. I think that's right. I think. Or was it the girls around the side? I can't remember. Doesn't matter anyway. So the girls are at the top <clears throat> and the girls have to kiss the person, the boy, who they think has done the dirty secret. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So the boys are around the side. The girls are all standing at the top. So where does the bottle come into play then? I think the bottle is the questions. I think the bottle is the questions. So th they spin the bottle and it lands on a question. The question is asked and then the girls or one girl has to select a boy who she thinks has done the dirty secret. So get this, this is on the television, right? On the television. Here are the secrets. Last night's secrets. Who was caught doing it? You know, it's X. <laughs> Who was caught doing it in the car? So straight away the girls, they all huddle around, chat, 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 in their in their string outfits. Chat, 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 chat. And then one of them breaks away from the group and goes and kisses someone. <laughs> like that. You know, the least good looking. I mean, they're all reasonably good. All got nice bodies. That don't mean to say they're good looking. So she went for the least good looking one. Incidentally, that's always, <coughs> that's always a bit of advice for you there, boys and girls. <coughs> if you fancy some people in a pub, always go for the least good looking one because that's the one you're like most likely to get hold of. The good looking ones are always trying to look around for the next best thing. So the, generally the good looking blokes and girls go, go home alone because they haven't found anyone that's up to their standards. 
that's how I always managed to get on, you know, because I was the least looking, good looking one. So people would come to me by the end of the night when they were a bit drunk. So I usually used to get lucky all the time to. Another one. Another question was, who was caught doing it in the car? Girls huddle around, you know, chat, 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 chat. And walk over to a boy. Same one again. <laughs> tongues and all. Tongues and all. Um, there was one boy on there. Who has a list of everyone he's ever done X <laughs> with on his iPhone? He keeps a list. I mean, how many people were on these lists? I reckon probably about 20, 25. Pfft, amateurs, dear. Amateurs. 25, is that it? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> oh, dear. And there was the, the last one was, um, which boy here has had threesomes, foursomes and fivesomes? And once again, the girl come down chose someone and that is the basis of the whole program isn't it ghastly that the stuff that they are this was on ITV2 there's two really awful channels on the telly ITV2 and ITVBE oh, and Channel 4 as well is it Channel 4 who does Big Brother I don't know that's on again isn't it is that on again Celebrity Big Brother or something like that another awful program so there we are. Wasn't impressed by Love Island. Has anyone watched this rubbish? My nephew watched it. it I spoke to my nephew on the way. He was on the way. Uh, he was at home last night. Spoke to him last night. And he said, have you have you been watching Love Island? I said, oh, you, uh, and that's what made me watch it. I said, well, I haven't watched it before. He said, oh, you should. It's good. He loves it. He's 20. He loves it. Yeah, but he's looking after the girl, looking at the girls on there and he pausing it at the right moment. You know what I mean? Uh, Kevin says, I thought you were like Big Brother. I do not like Big Brother, Kevin. No, dreadful program. Um, Ray, doing what in the car? You know, Ray. It, uh, 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 uh. It's X. Yes. That's what they were doing. It got caught doing it in the car. Ashley says, Chris lost his looks a long time ago. I know, Ash. What can you do, darling? Ah, oh, Steve Allen's been talking about that as well, has he? On LBC, I've heard his show today. Yes, he probably hates it as well. It's awful. <coughs> Matt's in London working. What are you doing sitting there watching this then, Matt? Shouldn't you be doing something? <laughs> there he is. There's my nephew, Jimmy Butler, there now. 9pm ITV2. There he is, Jimmy. Why aren't you at work this morning? <laughs> no one's at work. Am I stopping you all from working? I can soon disappear, you know, if I'm stopping you from working. Dear. Lewis hates the programme. What a load of old... Yeah, it does. certainly is, Lewis. <laughs> dear, dear me. Morning. Uh, Lewis says, what time do you have to vote by? 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. Sorry, 10 p.m. you've got to vote by. But don't turn up at 10 p.m. Literally at 10 o'clock. You stopped. You're stopped voting. If you ain't in there by... Ten, if there's a long queue, that's neither here nor there. The voting stops at 10. The doors close. That's the end of it. Got to get there way before that, Lewis. Make your vote count. I don't, don't care who you vote for. I, think just, I just do think it's um, uh, uh, more important to vote, OK? So that's Love Island. I suggest you don't watch it. I mean, pop on there. Have a look at the blokes and the girls, whichever you fancy there. Have a quick look at them and then go on to something else. Like Dad's Army, an excellent programme. Excellent programme. Dad's Army, get yourself the box set of Dad's Army. All right. <laughs> what have we got? We've got something. Oh, no, my mate's coming. We're going to watch the election at home tonight. I was going to watch the election at Central Station, actually. Um, they've got a bit of a party going on there, which, which will be great fun. Uh, again, whichever way you vote, you know, you, you'd enjoy going down to Central Station tonight, which is uh, the bar I do the karaoke at on Mondays and Fridays. Also host uh, Cabaret there on most Saturdays there. Um, but the thing is, you know, by 12 o'clock, I want to go home. I, I'm not a late night person anymore. Generally, by 12, I want to go home. And the the election, the, the voting stops at 10. You might get a few votes in by 12, but you're never going to know who's going to win at 12 o'clock. Most of the votes coming sort of 
around about two till five in the morning. That's when you that's when you'll get a good idea who's going to win. So it's a bit pointless me being there really. If I'm at home, I'll probably watch it till about one one thirty in the morning, maybe a bit later till two o'clock. So I'll probably watch a lot of it on the um, on the telly, you know, tonight and be done with it like that. All right. Um, fun car karaoke. This is something new that we're going to do. You've probably seen already various people now doing car karaoke. <clears throat> so we thought we jumped on the bandwagon. And I'm going to try and do one with an unnamed... I'm not going to tell you who it's going to be. An unnamed person who you may or may not know this afternoon. I'm meeting up with an unnamed person this afternoon and we're going to try car karaoke. Now, I'm still not quite sure. It won't be live, OK? So we'll include that in tomorrow's show. Or it might just be tomorrow's show. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do that with, with that yet. Uh, that, that's, that's in its, that's in its uh, starting stages, so we say. So fun car karaoke. Someone gets into the car with me, has a bit of a chat and sings a song. That's all arranged for this afternoon. I've got a new sucker thing to go on my car window which works very well and we'll see how that goes i'm still not sure what i can call that um i've had various suggestions from people if you've got a suggestion then please put it on the wall and i'd like to know what that suggestion is if it works this afternoon i'm going to invite anyone else who wants to come and do car karaoke and we'll meet up at some point. You can come and sit in the car and do it as well. All right? And we'll we'll do, we'll do it on the camera and all that business. And I think that would be quite entertaining. We'll have a good laugh with that. So if you want to do that as well, you'll be welcome to do that. So I'll try that out this afternoon. Um, it was Mark Cording, actually, karaoke star Mark Corden, who came out with the um, suggestion, Fun Car Karaoke. James Corden, of course, started this off on his American chat show, which I gather is coming over here. Isn't the Late Late Show coming over here with James Corden? ITV did a, did, tried it, didn't they, recently? Oh, it was ghastly. Dreadful. That It was really bad. The Tonight Tonight Show, or what, what did they call it on ITV? But they had various different people doing it, and it just was not good. It wasn't good at all. Really wasn't. Um... Uh, so that's the late show coming to, I think that's on one of the, probably Sky One, something like that. I have no Sky here, I'm afraid. We can't afford subscription television, dear. I've got bills to pay, bills to pay, yes. So fun car karaoke is what I will probably call it. If you have a better suggestion, put it on there. Please don't be offended if I don't take your suggestion. But I'm looking around for, for what I'm going to call this. At the moment, I've got fun car karaoke. That one's kind of sticking out to me. Or Chris's car karaoke. I don't know. Have you got any more suggestions? Put them on there. Um, oh, Adam says, Chris Reardon's a cappella party. Ah, uh, well, it won't be a cappella. We got the music as well, Adam. Oh, yes. It'll all be done properly, dear. What I'm going to do is play the music in the car on a stick, which is all prepared. It's already in the car, actually. I'm going to play the music in the car on a stick low, so you probably won't be able to hear the music in the car, but uh, high enough for the person or people to be able to sing along with it. And once the recording's done, I'll bring it back here to Studio O1, a1 at here at the United Court Tin Kingdom Talk television complex and then put it into some software, add the music at proper volume back onto it and see how that works. Now, I don't know how long it'll take. If I find it's taking too long, I'll have to think of another way to do it. But it's worth trying, I think. So that's what I'm going to try this afternoon. Chris Reardon's a cappella party. That's not bad at all. Acapella party. Quite like the acapella party bit because it goes along with the karaoke as, as well, you know. By the way, um, next karaoke is tomorrow night. OK, Friday. I'm looking for a Thursday night gig now, boys and girls. I'd like to do a karaoke or a quiz night on Thursdays. I've got Thursdays free at the moment. So if you know anywhere that might want a karaoke or a quiz night on a Thursday night, please let me know. 
OK, next karaoke night is tomorrow, Friday. And of course, this Sunday, we're back at the Camden Eye. All right, the Camden Eye in Camden. Nice times, 8 to 11 p.m. So you won't have to uh, worry about getting up late for work on Monday or anything. 8 to 11 p.m. Join us for karaoke at the Camden Eye this week. Uh... Uh, and it's right, literally, you walk out the tube station and it's there across the road. Come out at the Finchley Road exit because there's a couple of exits. Was that, I think there's only two exits there. Finchley Road exit. So if you look out the door, you know, have a look. Where's the cam tonight? If you can't see it, then it's outside the other door. All right. Just come out the door and you see it across the road. Come in and make sure you say hello to me. Give me a little tap on the shoulder or something like that. OK. Um. Adam says, sorry, Chris, delete, delete. I just realised what the first four letters of those words make a new word. Oh, just a minute. C-R-A-P. <laughs> C-R-A-P. <laughs> yes, Camden. Did I see Camden? Didn't I say Camden? What did I say? The Camden I in Camden. Didn't I say that? What did I say? Sorry. Oh, Adam wants to know, have you got a 30, anyone got a 32 inch or 40 inch TV they want to sell? Try eBay for that. That's very good. Uh, ref there's a, quite a lot of refurbished stuff on eBay, I noticed as well. In fact, I've, I think I've heard an advert on the radio of, of, of a site selling refurbished iPhones at like half the price of what they normally are. So that might be quite good. Rod says, Jalopy karaoke. No, I don't like that one, Rod. Sorry, mate. Don't like that. Anyone else suggesting for that? Ray will be up for it. Ray, you're on, mate. OK, we'll get you in the car at some point and do that. Um, anyone else suggesting anything there? No. No, I don't know. Finchley Road. Yeah, you come out of Camden Station. It's on the Finchley Road. That's the Camden Ice. That'd be the third one we've done there. OK, what's the time? Half past ten. I should really go and have my pills now. I think I might go and have my pills. It was I did have another couple of news little stories here. Um, let's have a look. Uh, in which newspaper was it? There we are. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. Yes, I found a website this morning advertised within the face. You know, you get Facebook advertise, uh, ad adverts called I Broke My Gadgets, which uh, they've got three shops. So I think you can do it by um, sending stuff in as well. I broke my gadget.co.uk. Now they fix everything iPhones, phones, tablets, computers, Macs, games, consoles, MP3 players, sat navs, TVs, and cameras. They fix all these things. And I was having a look at their website. Unfortunately, some of the text they use is really faint. And what you have to do is highlight it because you just can't see it. But if you want anything repaired, that I, I just wondered if anyone had had stuff repaired. Does anyone have stuff repaired anymore? Or do you um, uh, do you do? That's what I said, Kentish. Did I uh, did I say Finchley Road? I beg your pardon. Kentish Town Road. It's on Kentish Town Road. OK. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. It's on Kentish Town. So come out of Camden Station. Kentish Town. If you look out the station door, you see it over the road. It's that close, honestly. What was I just saying? Oh, yeah, fix. Do you have anything fixed anymore? Does everything, everyone just buy new all the time? I tend to have fi things fixed twice. And if it breaks down after that, then I get a new one. Like this air conditioning in there. Over the 11 years I've had the air conditioning in there, it has been fixed twice. So this is the third time it's gone wrong. Bloke, oh, did I tell you a bloke come round? Yeah, and I've got a quote now, and I'm happy with a quote. Uh, I'm going to get an LG one. So I'm just waiting for the bloke to come back with me uh, and tell me when they're coming to install that. Uh, so that's what we fix. So it might be worth having a little look on there if you've got anything broken to have it fixed. D does anyone have stuff fixed anymore, though? A lot of people, my best mate, um, he, he, as soon as something breaks, he buys a new one. He bought a new oven the other week. Eight, 500 quid for an oven, honestly. And then the funny thing is, two weeks later, mine went. I bought one. 200 pounds. We don't need to spend money on stuff like that. Jeez. Um, OK. Well, I think that's it, boys and girls. We're going to do today's birthdays now. Let's do today's birthdays. Happy birthday this morning to... 
Gary George Redpath, 65 years old today. He is such a nice man. I haven't seen him for some time now. He used to come along to the karaoke at Belushi's in London Bridge, which is actually just down the road um, to where the terrorist event took place, uh, the terrorist attack took place on Saturday night. So happy birthday to you, Gary. 65 years old today. Always a pleasure, sir. He used to be a boxer. He was a boxer, weren't you, Gary? Happy birthday, Gary. Uh, happy birthday to Ricky Dog who's moved to the Isle of Wight, 26 years old today. And it's about time you had all that air cut off, Ricky. I'm going to I'm going to hold you down at one point. Next time I see you, I'm going to jump on you, hold you down and shave your head. He's got so much air, it's all over here. He's got that messy hair look. Happy birthday, Ricky. How's things going on the Isle of Wight then, eh? Are you all right on there? It's a bit quiet, perhaps? I'm sure you'll get used to it. Happy birthday. Um, we, do you know we didn't take any phone calls today, did we? Uh, oh, well, it's gone now, isn't it? <laughs> Too late now. Happy birthday to Simon O'Connor, 39 years old. Happy birthday, Simon. A few years since I saw you as well. I've left the two brewers now, Simon, by the way. I left last week, funnily enough. If you ever come down there, expect to see me. I'm gone from there now. So happy birthday, Simon. Uh, Russell Bruce, 53 today. Now, Russell uh, was the manager of several Mitchell and Mitchell and Butler pubs. Uh, and I worked in, was either two or three of them with him. Lovely bloke. I think he lives up in Scotland now. I think he's finished. Uh, but happy birthday to you, Russell. All right. It was always a pleasure knowing you, sir. And happy birthday today to my very good friend, Chris Walker. I can't believe you're 33 now, Chris. He's one of the customers that used to come in the black cap uh, quite a lot. Always got on well with him, Chris. Chris, I've given practically given up the DJ now completely. I'm almost completely out of that. I just do a little job on Saturday nights that I'm very happy with, actually. I'm, I'm happy to keep doing that one. But I don't take on DJ jobs at all anymore. I'm just completely karaoke and um, quiz nights now. All right, so happy birthday, Chris. He runs a bar. Um, let me see if I can tell you where that is. can't remember the name of the bar. Do you, is it on there? I don't know which bar he runs. Hang on a minute. Um, no, it's not on there, is it? I don't think it's on there. It is you who runs the bar, isn't it, Chris? I think it is anyway, yeah. I'm sure it's you who runs a bar somewhere. I don't know what one it is, though. But uh, happy birthday to you, sir. You don't want a quiz night or a karaoke night, do you? I'm looking for a Thursday night gig. Karaoke or quiz. Anyway, let's sing the song, gang. Here we go. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday on this election day. Remember to cast your vote, boys and girls. Cast your votes. Votes, lines are open and waiting for your votes now. All right. Uh, any more last things there? Ray's going back to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Ray. You can't go back to sleep at half past ten in the morning, mate. No. Get up and do something. If it's your day off, go down to a museum or to the cinema or so. You can't just lay in bed all day, Ray, can you? I can't do that anyway. I can't do that. All right, that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you on the next show very soon. You have a lovely Thursday now. Bye-bye.